Tom Jenkins here. Oh, uh, Tom, we're going to throw some questions at you here. Some of them are more serious, some of them are fun. It'll just be a little hodgepodge, a collection of, uh, of entertaining things here. So hopefully we'll have some answers for some of these things. As long as my answers don't get me exiled from Holmes County, <laughs> we're fine. Okay. Well, you know all about being exiled. <laughs> all right. Uh, number one, um, who have been the most influential people in your life? I, I would have to say there are four. Uh, my mom, uh, my sister. Uh, coach Pup Williams, my junior high coach, who uh, exposed me to a different culture. And uh, although it was by choice, he taught me what it was like to be a minority. Uh, and then uh, Coach Don Haskins from Texas Western. Uh, the, uh, I imagine most viewers will, are people that uh, uh, check these interviews out will uh, uh, remember Coach Haskins, he mm -hmm. was uh, the coach from Glory, Glory Road. And obviously, if you haven't had a chance to talk to Tom Jenkins about these things, stop him sometime and ask him, and he'll, he'll be more than happy to share some of his many, many stories that uh, kind of come with the, this whole list of, it, it's a laundry list of stories that you can tell. Some of them are, are not exactly PG days, but hey, you know. <laughs> That's what we all were young once. <laughs> All right, uh, question number two here. Who is your favorite basketball player of all time? Uh, it has to be Curly Neal. Uh, uh, Curly was from Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, went to Johnson C. Smith University in Charlotte. Uh, played briefly for the Atlanta Hawks, but he's uh, gained his fame from uh, playing with the Globetrotters. Uh, uh, Curly was best friends with Coach Pop Williams, uh, my junior high coach. And he's the one that taught me how to handle the basketball and helped me to, uh, develop the basketball skills that I had back then. And the game of basketball took me to places that I would never have had the opportunity to uh, go to without uh, being a quality player. And again, for those of you who don't know Tom that well, a tremendous point guard in his own day, which was just a few years back, not many, not many <laughs> I, years ago. I, I don't have any eligibility left, let <laughs> put it that way. All right, question number three, as we move along here. Uh, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? Paradise. Which is where? Uh, well, you figure it's, uh, I've been to Martinique in the French West Indies, to Morocco, to living in Montego Bay. I've lived in the Redneck Riviera, uh, to, to Key West, to the Greek Isles. Um, and what I found is that uh, paradise is a state of mind, it's not a place. And uh, all I, uh, paradise requires a peaceful environment, good friends and a great dog <laughs> and i have my own slice of paradise right here in berlin ohio so I, i'm good all right so we all know your affinity for dogs and and you've had a dog your whole life i think pretty much and, yes and, and you still have one to this day best friend uh, he's outside in the car waiting on me right now so so why dogs and not cats um with dogs uh, their ability to communicate. I, I think if you spend a lot of time with dogs, uh, that uh, they can learn up to 400 words and phrases. Uh, they have, uh, contrary uh, to some of the science, the science uh, they do have the ability to have a complete thought uh, and, uh, and analyze situations and not all instinctive like cats. And so it's the communication that develops between me and my dogs that, 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 that I cherish. All right, throughout your travels here across this great world of ours, one of the stops was Jamaica, where you lived for a little while in your life. And again, if you wanna find out some great <laughs> stories here from Tom, you can talk Jamaica all forever. <laughs> what was the best part about living in Jamaica? There were no problems. Um, <laughs> there was this old man in a curve uh, between, between Montego Bay and the grill. I started going to Jamaica in 72, and I never knew his name. We just all called him uh, the old man in the curve. <laughs> and he had a little, uh, a little beer stand there where he sold red striped beer. And 
uh, I would go out and sit with him for hours upon hours. A wisest old guy that I've ever met. And uh, in Jamaica, they have a, a saying that goes, no problem, man. And anytime you ask, I'm in no problem. So we were talking one day, and, and the old man the curve informed me. He said, you know why there's no problem in Jamaica? I said, no, why? He said, because there's no solutions. So if there's no <laughs> solutions, there can be no problem. <laughs> so, yeah, the thing I like about Jamaica is there's no problems. Well, before Jamaica, you lived in Atlanta, Georgia for a time, worked as a big-time lawyer there, highly, hugely successful firm, big-time lawyer. So if I were to get in trouble today, would you be able to still represent me? Now, why, why would you need the lawyer? See, uh, <laughs> you know, you're, I always thought you had a halo around your head, so now you're <laughs> telling me that halo is tarnished. Uh, I hate to burst your bubble. You know. the, the, uh, uh, one, I wouldn't represent you because uh, you got to remember that I live in paradise now, and part of paradise is a peaceful environment. And do you realize there's not a single lawyer shingle in Berlin, Ohio? <laughs> and that's why it's so it's such a peaceful environment because there are no lawyers, <laughs> and so I'm not going to dis I'm not going to disrupt the peace uh, by practicing law by any means. But no, uh, I I have my uh, I I was only licensed to practice in in, in the south in Georgia, and uh, I am, have never been licensed to practice in Ohio, and it's been so long that I I'm in I'm considered an inactive member of the bar. Okay, but if you really want to know some really great stories from Tom Jenkins, talk about your days. Uh, they, just some really fun stories there that you can share or not. Yes. <laughs> All right, moving along here. Uh, getting into the high school basketball realm. Should high school basketball have a shot clock? No, and uh, this is my thoughts on this, is that uh, high school basketball is played at a pretty good pace. Uh, it's very rare that you would need a 35 second shot clock uh, in this day and age. What, what I think, because of the, the game has become such a quick game and it's taught at a quick pace, that if you put a shot clock in, now it's going to become a hurried pace. And the whole purpose of, of high school athletics, high school basketball, is to master the fundamentals. And if you have a shot clock where you have a hurried pace, uh, now, the mastery of those fundamentals is going to further diminish than it already has. Okay. And so, uh, no, I don't, I don't believe in a shot clock for a different reason, not because the game's slower, this type of thing. It's just yeah. I think it will negatively, negatively impact the mastering of basic fundamental skills. Okay. Well, you moved here to Berlin Paradise a couple years ago. Uh, well known for the cuisine around here. Yeah. Have you fallen in love with any particular one food since you moved here? Uh, well, I, I'm a southern boy now, so, you know, it's uh, uh, give me collards, hot sauce, and, and fried chicken or red beans and rice. Uh, I, I, do like, I do like the beef sticks, the spicy beef sticks. Mm -hmm. I do like the cheese uh, here. And, uh, oh, God, I love the pastries, especially those, <laughs> especially those vanilla cream sticks. And, yeah. You know, oh, I, it's hard to walk away from them. So, <laughs> so there, are, there are several things. Uh, that uh, are, are more than suitable uh, to my palate, but not very suitable uh, with, my, uh, with my belly here. All right, Mr. Old School, here's a, here's a question for you. iPod or are you a record player kind of guy and what genre do you listen to? Uh, I'm a record player guy, CD guy, uh, and it's uh, all blues or soul, uh, from Albert Collins to Eddie James to Junior Walker to James Brown. All right, so no Justin Bieber in your life? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sure he'd be disappointed. Oh, no, that's, uh, I, unfortunately, no Justin Bieber. <laughs> All right, last question here. Will you go see the new Star Wars movie when it comes out? One, I, I, I'm not a sci-fi guy, you know. Uh, I'm more of a courtroom drama uh, kind of guy. And uh, uh, just give me an old black and white episode of Perry Mason, and I'm good. <laughs> All right. Well, hey. Thanks for joining us. Those are, those are some interesting factoids <laughs> that we know about Tom Jenkins now. For, you never can get too detailed when it comes to these things, I guess. But Dave, thanks for having me, and thanks for all y'all do to promote the class.